Good morning, afternoon, or evening, everybody. So I kind of want to jump into this because I've been seeing a lot through my feed uh, about people wanting to go and prophesy the, this enormous amount of wealth that are, are coming to people who believe in God. And, and they're speaking on behalf of God, saying that God is telling them to tell you that you're going to get a plethora of money, right? You're going to get a lot of money. You're going to just be wealthy beyond belief. Um and God wants you to be wealthy, right? Well, that contradicts scripture. And anybody who goes on here to YouTube who is prophesying to you and telling you that God wants you wealthy and wants you to be rich, I can assuredly tell you that this is false. God is not going to want people rich because understanding that when people start to become rich, their desires change, right? Their 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 faith in God starts changing. And I'm not saying that God doesn't or will not allow people to have money. That's not what I'm saying. But to sit and say that God wants everybody to be prosperous with this abundance amount of wealth, well, let's see what he tells a rich young ruler when he was on earth, right? Let's see what Jesus says about this. And you can find this in Chapter 19, verses 18 through 24, I believe it is. Okay, so let's go to the scripture and see what it says. And this is what it says in Matthew 19, 18 through 24. Now, mind you, this is Jesus talking to a rich man because this rich man wants to get into heaven. So Jesus is laying this out for him. And this is what he says. He said to him, which ones? He's talking about the rich man. And Jesus said, you shall not murder, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not bear false witness, honor your fa father and mother, and you shall love your neighbor as yourself. The young man said to him, all these things I have kept from my youth. What do I still lack? So now he's asking a question, what do I still lack? Because I've done all these things. I have kept your commandments. Now these are commands from God. He says, I've committed I have kept all of your commandments, Lord. What is it that I lack? Please tell me because I want to follow you. And Jesus said to him, If you want to be perfect, go sell what you have and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven, and come follow me. But when the young man heard that saying, he went away sorrowful, for he had great possessions. Again, here's worldly possessions. And Jesus told him, go sell all of that. Go sell all of that stuff. That stuff doesn't matter. Your treasure is in heaven, not on earth. Sell everything that you have, all your possessions. Then Jesus said to his disciples, Assuredly, I say to you, that it is hard for a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven. And again, I say to you, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. So Jesus is saying, don't get caught up with all these material things, the, the, the worldly things. Now, I've had people come to me when I've talked about this before and just generalized conversations. And people want to sit and, and basically mock me and say, yeah, go sell all your stuff. Get rid of your house, your cars and all that and then follow Jesus. Because they want to take things out of context. They want to take the gospel and distort it and twist it and, and change it. Um to fit what they want to fit. And so what I'm saying is that when you have all these people come to you and they want to prophesy to you and they want to say that Jesus wants you wealthy, well, Jesus has said it. He doesn't want people wealthy. He wants people to have their wealth in heaven, not on earth. But he will provide you everything that you need because he is a God that will keep his covenant. He is a God that keeps his promises. He says, listen, do not worry. I will provide you with everything you need. And he knows that we need a, a roof over our head. He knows we need transportation. He knows we need food. But he doesn't want us to be corrupted with the wealth. He doesn't want us to store up all these riches because that's not going to get you anywhere. See, Jesus is telling us, and like he told the rich young man, keep your treasure in heaven. That's where I want you to be. I'm going to supply your need. I am going to supply your need in life. 
but I'm not going to supply an abundance of wealth in your life because you wouldn't make it to heaven because wealth will distort it. Again, he says this in verse 24 he, when he says, and again, I say to you, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man or per man to enter the kingdom of heaven. So I'm going to replace, I don't want to replace the word man, but let's look at person, okay? That's male and female. Most people will segregate it and say he's just talking about man and man only. He's talking about mankind, right? If you are a follower of Christ, you should be keeping the eye on the prize, which is making it into heaven, right? It's making it to heaven. And sometimes what people do when they get an abundance of wealth is they forget the principles. They forget how to live for Christ because now they've been wealthy. Now they have the money and they can do whatever they want. I worry about finances at times. Am I going to be able to take care of my family? Am I going to be able to, to cover this doctor bill? Am I going to be able to... Um, get this kind of stuff, food and, and items that we need. And I feel like I, I am sinning against God because of that worry. Because God says, listen, don't worry about it. I will take care of you. And he has. He has supplied me with everything that I need. He's not supplying me with all of my wants, but he will supply me with all of my needs. Sure, I would want to have a million dollars or a few million dollars so that way my family's taken care of. Sure, I would want to have uh, maybe a, a, a better car or sure, I would want to be closer to family. Sure, I would want to have a kind of job that, that I really want because I think I would be excel in that job. But God sees everything and he knows what would happen if I got that want. So he says, listen, I'm going to give you this need because I need you here. You want to go there, but I need you here. And so he'll put me there. Um, and that's okay. That's okay. So for some of us who love the idea of being extremely wealthy and having money at our fingertips that we can just go and buy whatever and waste it on whatever. Um, please go and read Matthew uh, chapter 19, verse 18 through 24, 18 through 24, and really let that soak in. What would happen? And think, think of it like this. Just sit down and, and think of it, because I've done this before. What would I do if I had three and a half million dollars, or a million dollars, or nine hundred and eighty thousand dollars? What would I do with it? Well, first of all, I would pay off my entire mortgage. All right, I'd, I'd pay off my mortgage. I'd get my house taken care of. Then I would pay my tithes to the church. I would pay that ten percent because God gave me that money. I was I, He blessed me with this money, so I'm going to give that back, right? And then whatever else I would have, I would try to set up some kind of future, some kind of uh, an inheritance that I could pass down to my children financially. But the most important thing is I want to pass down to my children an inheritance of God, of, of the Spirit, right? I want them to be led in the right way. Not by money, not by greed, not by saying, hey, I want all this stuff. And then I've even expounded on that and said, listen, if I had $2 million or $3 million or $4 million, what would I do with all that money? Well, again, like I said, I would pay the tithes to the church. I'd pay off my mortgage. I'd probably get a new vehicle. Um, some friends of mine, I'd probably uh, cut them some checks and send them some money to help them out. But what do I need all that money for? Outside of, of that, what do I really need that money for? nothing. I just want the money so I could have it, so I could take care of everything I wanted to take care of, but I don't necessarily need it. So think of that as you 
listen to this video, think about that throughout the day and figure it out. And I'm not saying that God wants you broke, broke. I'm not saying God wants you poor. I'm not saying that God wants to strip you from being able to live your life. But what I'm saying is, is that a lot of times I believe people will misunderstand it and there is nothing more enticing to a lot of people than money. So if you're going to like make money the root of your happiness or money for the root of your worries to be gone, then you're not having faith in Christ. And that's the issue. And I believe that this is what the rich ruler was going through. You know, hey, I've done all these things, but he made money the focal point of his lifestyle. And the thought of losing all of that prestige, all of that wealth, everything that he had just to follow Christ because Christ knew his heart. He wasn't going to make it. That's why it's so important. That's why Jesus says it's much easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than a rich man to enter into heaven. So think about that today or think about that over the next uh, few months. Be careful what you listen to online. Um, be careful of people saying that, you know, God is telling me to tell you or God wants you to be wealthy. God wants you to be super rich. God wants you to have all of this other stuff. I ask you to go into the book of Matthew chapter 19 verses uh, 18 through 24 and read the scripture and understand. If it goes against what God is saying, then it is not from God. It is people wanting to devise their own things. It's people that want to lead you astray or, or give you a false sense of belief. With that, I just want to say I love you guys. I hope you guys are doing well. Stay in the word and stay in love.